Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you could play a song called Sarah's Song by Ricky Hill. And we'll talk about where we're going to move this for key in a moment, because we're going to end up capoing on 2nd fret for this song. We're going to start on an A minor chord, and when we play A minor, first finger is going to go to the B string on the 1st fret, 2nd finger on the D string on the 2nd fret, and 3rd finger on the G string on the 2nd fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like A minor chord, and it sounds really, really sad. And then from the A minor, we're going to go into a C major chord. And when you play C major, actually from the A minor, all you really have to do is move the third finger to the A string on the third fret. So now I got first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D on the second, third finger on the A string on the on the third fret, and that's called C major. And it sounds really really happy. And then from the C major, we're going to be going to a D major chord. And when we play D major, first finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret. Second finger on the high E on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, then you now get your clear sound that. And that's called D major, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the D major, we're going to be going to an F major chord. We'll talk about a really easy way to do that in a moment. But if you know the bar F major, you do your first finger across the entire first fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, third finger on the A on the third fret, and the pinky on the D string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like F major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. But if you're just starting out or you just want to avoid the bar chords, a good substitute for that is something called F major 7. And the way you play F major 7, first finger goes to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, just like the D chord, that'll get your clearest sound that. It's called F major, or F major 7. It sounds really groovy, happy. And then from the F major, we're going to go back to the A minor chord. And then we're going to go to an E major chord. And when you play E major, first finger is going to go to the G string on the first fret. Second finger on the A string on the on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like E major chord. It sounds really really happy. And then from the E major, we're going to go back to the A minor, and then we're going to go back to the E major again. So from the beginning, you got kind of A minor, C, D, F, A minor. Sometimes with a song like this to make it more interesting, I like adding something called a strum pattern. And Sarah's song is actually in what's called 3-4 time, where they're kind of three big downs. And one way to kind of do the song actually would be kind of feeling two, two of those threes on each of the chords. One, two, three, one, two, three, D, one, two, three, one, two, three, F, one, two, three, one, two, three, A minor, one, sounds like in the recording though is that they're kind of doing a bass note and then two downs on each chord so for instance on the A minor you could play the A string for your bass and then do another two downs so you got kind of bass down down A minor with an A bass down down A minor with an A bass down down A minor with an A bass down down on the C chord you have that same bass note so you'd have C with an A bass down down C with an A bass down down on the D chord you have the D string for your bass D bass down down D bass down and then on the F, if you're doing the F major 7, you have the D for your bass. If you're doing your full bar for the F, then you'd have the low E string for your bass. Low E bass down, down, low E bass down, down, low E bass down, down. And then on the A minor, I'm talking about having the A, a bass. On the E major, you have the low E string for your bass. So if you kind of do two of those bass down downs on each of the chords, that sound really like the recording. You'd have A minor with an A bass down, down, A bass down, down, C with an A bass down, down, C bass down. Sometimes there's kind of this big hit on the E major where you may want to accent and kind of do it down and kind of kill the strings with your right hand. Um, but the weird thing is to play along with Ricky Hill, instead of starting on an A minor, he's actually starting on a B minor chord. So what you want to do to play along with the recording is take a capo, and if you put the capo on 2nd fret, then now your A minor is really a B minor chord, your C major is really a D major chord, your e D major is really an E major chord, and the F major is really a G major chord get to it, the E major is really an F sharp major chord. But just to try that, you can just do those downs on each one. So A minor, one, two, three, four, five, six, C, one, two, Kind of to work that as kind of that bass down.
down, down idea. So we'd have a remember the bass down, down, bass down, down, see with the bass down, down, bass down, down, do the D bass down, down, D bass down, down, a bass down, down, bass down, down, a bass down, down, bass down, down, you look bass down. four patterns though is a down down up down up which you could use with this song so for instance on the A minor if you just try that a lot you'd have down down up down up 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 so this would be kind of cool like feeling two of those on each of the chords so you could try that doing the A minor down up down up down down up down C down down up down up down down up down D down down up down up down 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 up down 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 of that pattern so then you have a minor with an A bass down up down a bass down up down C with the bass down up down a bass down up down D with the bass down up down a bass down up down A with the bass down up down a bass down up down A minor with an A bass down up down a bass down up down D with the bass down up down a bass down up down A minor with an A bass down up down a bass down up down D with the bass down up down a bass down up down Now through the tune though there's some really cool lead guitar parts and actually because we're kind of on a, a B minor chord when we start because of the capo, you could kind of make up some solo licks around a B minor pentatonic scale. And the way you play B minor pentatonic is if you take the first finger and kind of go all the way to the seventh fret on the low E string, that B note is kind of part of it. And then if you go to the tenth fret on the low E, that's a D note, and that's kind of part of the scale. And then if you go to seventh fret on the A, that's a E note, and that's part of it. The ninth fret on the D is kind of an F sharp note, and that's kind of part of it. And then you'd have an A note on the D string, 7th fret, and then 7th fret on the D string for a B note, and then you'd have 7th fret on the G for a D note, 3rd finger on, on, for the E note on the G string on the 9, then you got 7th uh, fret on the B string, and I'm thinking real frets, not the capo frets, the 7th fret on the B string for F sharp, 10th fret on, on the B string for an A, 7 on the high E for a B note, and the 10th fret on the high E for a D note. So you're really only fly, playing five notes, which is why it's called a pentatonic scale. This penta means five, so you're going B, D, E, F sharp, A, B, D, E, F sharp, A, B, D. So it might be kind of cool to kind of work some licks with that scale. So technically you could do like hammer-ons where you play the first note and kind of put your, your finger down for the second note. And that could kind of become kind of a lick idea for you, is kind of doing hammer-ons. Um, something else you may want to try is pull offs where you kind of play the, the, the farthest note and kind of pull off to the first finger. So I'm kind of playing, playing the notes and kind of letting my finger just kind of fall off the string to get the sound carried back to the other finger. Something else you may want to play around with is slide licks where you kind of play the note and kind of leave enough pressure to kind of slide it to the next note of the scale. Down slides can be a cool idea. And then bends actually is what kind of happens through a lot of the recording where you kind of press into and up at the end of the guitar at the same time. So you may want to kind of try that too. And if you do a lot of little teeny bends, that's called vibrato. So you can kind of take this, as, that scale as kind of your alphabet, and then kind of try and make up some licks with it too. So it might be cool, a little jam thing for you to kind of mess around with some lead licks. But that's the basics of how you could strum through and kind of play some lead over the top of Sarah's song by Ricky Hill. So good luck!